This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today, my guest is John Sales, the CEO of the Vermont Food Bank. Welcome, John. Thank you, Dennis. Glad to be here. Uh, first of all, John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Dennis, I have lived in Vermont for 20 years. I worked for state government for about 10 of those years in a couple different capacities for doing utility regulation and then working at the Agency of Natural Resources. But 10 years ago, I got this amazing opportunity to lead the Vermont Food Bank. Um, and it's just, it's been the best job I ever had. That's great. Well, tell us about the Vermont Food Bank itself, about its history and, and how it came about. Sure, the, the food bank's been around since about 1986, uh, when food banks were popping up all over the country. Um, basically, the need for, for food at food shelves and soup kitchens um, everywhere was increasing. And the organizations all got together and said, wow, we need to be able to source more food. So they created these larger organizations, um, which we call food banks. So we're the only food bank in Vermont. Um, as I said, we've been around since 1986, and we serve uh, both directly and uh, people in Vermont and through a network of 215 uh, food shelves, meal sites, senior centers, homeless shelters, after school programs, you know, places like uh, Feeding Chittenden, which is just down the street from where we're filming, and the brand new South Burlington Food Shelf um, on Dorset Street. That's great. Well, possibly how many people does the food bank serve uh, annually? Well, through our partners and directly, we'll serve almost one in four Vermonters, over 150,000 people. Um, it, it seems like a lot, but, uh, you know, hunger is, um, hunger is an economic issue. It's, it's families who have to make trade-offs in their budgets about, am I going to be able to pay the whole mortgage this month or, or buy enough food? Um, is the car broken down or do I need new winter tires or this time of year do I have to fill the oil tank? Um, so there are choices and food is a, a part of your budget that you can skimp on. And so sometimes, you know, mom and dad will say, well, we'll have to just make sure the kids get fed and uh, we'll do what we can. Well, tell us a little bit about something uh, that's mentioned in your website and, and something I've heard a lot about uh, in the national media, this concept of food insecurity. Yeah. Well, food insecurity is, is a, a, a government term and it's it basically means that you don't have the means to consistently have enough nutritious food in your household to live an active and healthy lifestyle. So that means, you know, parents having the right food they need to be able to, to go to work and perform. To kids, we know um, brain development is, is intensely affected by having enough and proper food for kids. Um, you ask any teacher, they will tell you they know the kids who are hungry. They're the ones who are complaining about stomach aches. They're the ones who fidget in their seats and can't pay attention. Um, they're the ones that just um, aren't able to focus on what's happening in the classroom. And what about the quality of, of uh, nutrition? You know, more and more we're, we're understanding the relationship between good health and um, the right foods. So the, the Vermont Food Bank, our vision for Vermont is one where everyone has access to enough food every day where everyone is healthy and everyone takes action to end hunger and poverty. And that healthy part is really important. Um, you know, when you go to the grocery store, it's the, the perimeter of the store where it's the, the fresh vegetables and the meat counter. Um, that's the, also the most expensive part of the store, but it's the most important part of the store for our health. Um, we have to be able to eat plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables and lean meats and low-fat dairy in order to, um, to to be happy in our lives. Something. Can you give us an idea of, of the, the scope in, in terms of uh, the number of people involved in the food bank and, sure. and how it operates during sure. the course of the year? Yeah, we have um, 60 full-time employees. Um, we're a statewide organization, as you said. So we have a, a facility, a distribution center in Barrie. We have one in Rutland and one in Brattleboro. And from all of those, um, our trucks go out every day delivering food to to our partners, the food shelves and meal sites, um, but also doing direct distribution programs. Um, one that we really love is called Veggie Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. It's basically a farmer's market that we set up at schools and at hospitals all across the state. So we have, uh, we do 10 at serving 16 schools and we are at 10 of the 15 hospitals. Now we're hoping to expand that and we'll talk about that in a minute. 
Um, but it's basically a, a beautiful, fun environment. Um, lots of beautiful signage. There's people there welcoming you. There's cooking demonstrations and there's food cooking and great smells. And you can go through the line. And if you're a person who, who for some reason can't afford the kinds of fresh food that you, you need in your diet, you can show up there and, um, and go shopping. That's great. Now, do you have any kind of needs assessment or any, any requirements? So when, when people come to, to our Veggie Van Goghs, um, we, just, we just trust that they're there because mm -hmm. they need it. Um, my experience is that um, people, people, will, um, people will do what they need to do to take care of themselves and their families. And if they don't really need to go to Veggie Van Gogh, they don't. Mm -hmm. So some people say, well, what if somebody who doesn't deserve it shows up? Well, what I say is if, if you know, 90% of the people who are there really can't afford those fresh fruits and vegetables and 10% maybe could, mm -hmm. who cares? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll let those people um, have some nice carrots and potatoes and onions. Maybe they'll say something good or maybe they'll say something that'll get someone else interested. Right. That, that's really a, a wonderful attitude, I think. Uh, uh, making this uh, a partnership. Sort yeah. of. Well, and you know, the people going to Veggie Van Gogh or your local food shelf, they're all our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I said, there's, it's an economic issue. You know, it's, it's not, it's not an, they're not lesser people. They're not different people. They're our neighbors. Uh, they just can't afford enough food on the table this week. Mm -hmm. now, you've been around for quite a while, and do you see any particular issues or problems that are coming up this year? Um, you know, the, the biggest issues I'm seeing are policy issues mm -hmm. um, at the federal level. So there's been a number, a number of proposed rule changes which will um, decrease federal support for uh, food programs. So people maybe um, know what food stamps are. Well, federally it's called the SNAP program, and in Vermont it's called Three Squares Vermont. And there's been a couple of proposals that would pretty dra dramatically reduce the funding for that program. Now, for every meal that the food bank can help provide on somebody's table, um, Three Squares Vermont provides nine meals. So it's a much bigger and much more important effort. So we spend a lot of time advocating to make sure, both here in Vermont and at the federal level, um, that, that the Three Squares Vermont program is strong. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about this Vermonters Feeding Vermonters program. Yeah, I'm very excited. We, we, you know, the food bank, um, about distribute, you know, what is, what's a pound of food? But last year was almost 12 million pounds of food. Um, but about a little over 2 million pounds of that was fresh food. Um, and a lot of that comes from Vermont farms and Vermont farmers by donation. So the farmers are, are very generous. You know, they grow food in their fields. If it's not going to sell, they want to make sure someone's eating it. And they'll call the Vermont Food Bank. But we also purchase a lot of produce. Um, and we, we purchase a lot of it from, from other places around the country, and we have connections through our national organization. But we realize how important it is um, for the, the folks who are coming to Veggie Van Gogh's or going to a food shelf um, to get the freshest, uh, most delicious food, and that's food grown in Vermont. So the last couple of years, we've been partnering with Vermont Farms and actually purchasing Vermont-grown produce, um, first quality produce, and distributing that throughout the state. Um, it's, uh, we, we contract with the farmers before they plant their seeds and say, we want you know, uh, 5,000 pounds of onions or 20,000 pounds of acorn squash. Um, and so the farmers know what they're gonna plant, they know they have a contract with the food bank, and, and they can plan for the future and maybe expand their farming operations because um, you know, well, I know I can. I have this ten thousand dollars sale to the food bank, so I can take a little chance and and plant something new and try a new market. I see also that uh, in this Vermonters feeding Vermonters uh, program that there's a local component to it. And does that mean that you might do it in one county, and or do you take it from one part of the state to the other part of the state? How well, does that work? Yeah, we we are contracting with farmers from all different regions in the state. Um, including some here in Chittenden County, in Rutland County, in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, most of the food stays really local, right in the communities. Some of it, you know, if, it's, if there's 20,000 pounds of onions, um, it's not all going to necessarily stay in the community, and we make sure that it gets where it needs to be. 
Um, I think an important thing about Vermonters feeding Vermonters is, is it, it really is that win-win-win. Um, you know, it's creating new customers for local foods because the folks who are trying these farm fresh Vermont foods are then going to the store and, and maybe buying them. Um, you know, an example would be, you know, a mom who's, who has a couple kids um, maybe isn't going to buy that expensive broccoli mm -hmm. because what if the kids don't like it? But if you go to Veggie Van Gogh and try the local farmer's broccoli and take it home and the kids love it, next time you go to the store, you're much more likely to buy that and, and have a, a connection to local Vermont food. It's important though that the Vermont Food Bank is buying this food from the farmers. So one of the ways we, we want to um, help finance this work is by going to the state of Vermont and saying, hey, state, um, this is a win-win-win. It's, it's a win for uh, the folks who can't afford fresh fruits and vegetables. It's gonna keep down healthcare costs as people eat more healthily. It's, it's gonna support the farmers and the work that they're doing in our communities. Um, we'd like you to contribute to that work. So the food bank is going to be asking the legislature to um, make a $500,000 appropriation to actually pay the farmers to purchase that food and distribute it throughout our network. Um, you can learn more. I know the, the website's up there at um, feedingvermonters.org. We love to have people contact their local legislators and tell them um, we really support some funding for the food bank to make sure that everyone in Vermont gets to eat fresh local food. That's great. And that's a bill that's going to be coming up in the next session? That's right. We're going to be, we're going to be uh, there starting in January talking to legislators and um, getting some enthusiasm around funding Vermonters Feeding Vermonters. And the grant is $500,000. That's what we're asking for. You don't always get what you ask for, but um, we're, we're willing to talk. That's great. Well, tell us some of the, the other uh, sources of funding now that we're on that topic. Sure. Uh, how, how you, uh, this seems to me to be, you know, a lot of people have an image perhaps of a, a food bank or a food shelf or a, mm -hmm. maybe something they see at their church or, or a library and they seem to be all mixed together and, but you really organize it. This is, a, this is like a real like assembly line almost. Well, that's our, that's our role mm -hmm. in, in the community is to, to make sure that, that, um, you know, the, the whole chain is taken care of. You know, from the farm, um, it comes to the food bank, we make sure that the food is, is well presented and of high quality, pr pass it on to our local food shelves where people can come or through our Veggie Van Gogh program through direct distribution. Um, it's, uh, you know, you asked about funding. Um, the, right now, the state of Vermont um, funds the food bank um, at about 1% of our operating budget, which is about $84,000. Um, it's much less than a lot of the, our neighboring states like New York and Massachusetts and, and Maine are, um, do a better job of helping fund their food banks. That's one of the reasons we're going to ask the legislature for some more support here. But the, the vast majority of the funding for all this work comes from people in Vermont, um, from, from families, um, from older Vermonters, um, from small family foundations and some of the businesses here. Um, they make sure that, that we're here to feed our neighbors every year. Um, you know, there's different ways you can give. Um, you can sign up and be a sustaining monthly donor um, mm -hmm. uh, and have a, a withdrawal from your checking account or on your credit card. Um, an, an interesting way to give and think about it is um, what we call plan giving or putting a bequest in your will um, you, you think, well, I'm not rich. I'm not going to, you know, be leaving millions of dollars. You know, a lot of the bequests we get are, are a couple thousand dollars, um, but it makes a huge difference, and it doesn't take much time to, to do that. That's amazing. Only 1% comes from the government right now, or, or yeah. the state government. That, that's right. That, that's a, most people would think something of, of this nature where, you know, the, the image might be... Uh, giving things away, uh, you know, they might think it's all government, but it's not. Yeah. Um, some people actually think that we're a state government organization. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, the, our food bank and food banks across the country um, are, you know, funded by generous donors. Um, you know, I spend a lot of my time talking to donors um, about the impact, you know, and telling the stories. Um, you know, actually, if you go to our website, vtfoodbank.org, you can read a lot of stories. But one we've been highlighting is Lottie who's a woman, um, you know, has a daughter and just 
different jobs she's had and she moved to Maine to try and further her career and things didn't work out and she came back and just some some really amazing um, generosity of strangers has really touched Lottie's heart um, and going to the food shelf and getting food that's come through the Vermont Food Bank has really made a difference in her life and her family's life. That's great. You mentioned something about an affiliation with a national group. Tell us about that. So we're a member of the Feeding America Network, which is 200 food banks across the country. Um, and uh, Feeding America um, helps us source food. So from the big national food companies, the you know Kellogg's and General Mills and ConAgra, um, we can source donations through Feeding America. Um, they also do a lot of national advocacy for us. Um, we were talking about advocacy. So um, we have a great congressional delegation on hunger issues. Um, the, our senators and, and our representative um, are doing the right things to try and make sure that, that our neighbors in Vermont are getting fed. Um, but it, it takes a real coordinated effort, and Feeding America has a great um, office in D.C. that, that um, does advocacy on behalf of all the food banks across the country. And are, are they looking for support, or are they having issues uh, with, with that uh, ability to serve serve the network? Um, yeah, you know, in it's it's always um, you're always working hard to raise the funds to to um, meet your mission, and there's always more that you can do. You know, I think that's something we struggle with at the food bank. Um, for as much as we're able to do by the generosity of the people that support our work. There's so much more that we can do. Um, and we're always looking to, how do we do things a little bit different? Um, how do we do things better? I mean, we look at, look at the barriers to people um, being able to access food. It's, um, it's rural isolation, it's transportation, it's jobs. So how do, we, how do we partner with other organizations and efforts that are helping meet those needs, housing, um, and, and make sure that food is a component of what they're doing. You know, bringing the food that we have um, to people where they are. Um, so we like to say um, people should be able to get food where they live, work, play, and learn. Um, and that's our goal. Not travel great distances to, to, to get it. That's right. That's, that's part right. of the other problem, transportation. That's a, it's a huge issue, not only in Vermont, but in every rural part of this country. And what, um, uh, how do you get the information about this? A lot of people, again, a lot of people might think this is just a, something on the corner or maybe this is something that our church does once a year. Or How do you get this out to people? Um, and by being on Positively Vermont. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, uh, and also, you know, I'm all over the state all the time talking to people, talking to, to you know, rotary clubs or community groups or, or um, just individuals who might be interested um, where we have a really robust social media presence. So if you friend us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, um, you can learn a lot about what's happening at the Vermont Food Bank. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter. Um, we'll email you our newsletter quarterly. It tells wonderful stories about the people in Vermont who are being touched by the work that's supported by, by all, of our, all of our funders um, and other supporters. Um, and, it, and really, really, Dennis, it's, that's the big challenge. Um, a lot of people don't understand or realize the extent of the struggle for food security, that, that people just um, are really making those hard decisions, those trade-offs, and sometimes that trade-off is that there's not enough food on the table. Um, we're, I always believe that we're, um, we're missing tremendous human potential. Um, when people don't have a food to eat, they're not thinking about anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, who are here at, at, uh, at Channel 17, and it's all about um, civic engagement, right? It's all about getting involved in your community. But if you have to, if you're thinking about where's your next meal going to come from, how am I going to feed my kids tomorrow, you're not engaged in civic life. And I, I, I think that's something that we really underestimate. That's a, that's a very good point. So you're, you're, uh, you're involving uh, other organizations in the state and would like more to get involved uh, w with your organization. Absolutely. We're always looking to partner. Um, we know the, the food bank can't meet our mission alone. Um, this, is, this is about everyone coming together. 
That's great. So we're at the end of the uh, year. Uh, tell us uh, your plans maybe for the next uh, three or four months. Um, so we're heading into the, the holiday season, which is a, a time when people really think about hunger. You mm -hmm. know, you think about um, maybe Thanksgiving or Christmas, volunteering at the local food shelf or, or meal site, doing that, that holiday Thanksgiving meal. Um, but I really want people to know that hunger is an issue year round. Um, and uh, it's really important to, to support both the food bank and your local food shelf or meal site financially um, because we rely on that support. And a lot of that comes in during this part of the year. Um, but for, for volunteering and, and other types of support for advocating, to remember that it might be more important um, in the end of February or the middle of June to think about volunteering at your local food shelf or, or at the Vermont Food Bank. Um, if you go to our website, vtfoodbank.org, you can click on the volunteer button and see the, all the opportunities. Um, in fact, we were talking about fresh food and Vermont farmers during the summer, um, particularly late summer, we do gleaning programs. Mm -hmm. um, here we work out of the Intervale, actually, a great partner. And um, volunteers will actually go out into farmers' fields and harvest food that wouldn't otherwise be harvested, and it'll go st that day um, to your neighbors who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford it. That's great. Well, John, thank you very much for uh, appearing on Positively Vermont, and we wish you the best of luck in the future, and uh, we hope to have you back uh, whenever uh, uh, the need arises to make sure that more people know about this wonderful work you're doing. Thank you, Dennis. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, this is Dennis McMahon. My guest has been John Sales, the CEO of the Vermont Food Bank. Thank you for watching.